nitrogen transfer. Look at what's happening up here. In the process of doing the, uh, uh, the synthesis of the ammo ammonium, which is what this NH4 plus is, something has to happen to that ammonium. Because if we leave ammonium sitting around in water, ammonia, which is what the, 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 uh, the soluble form of ammonia is, okay, this ammonium ion in water is poisonous. It'll cause a problem for us. So we don't want to have too much free ammonium around, whether it's in us, whether it's in a plant, whether it's in a bacterium. Too much ammonia uh, free in water is going to cause a problem. And by the way, I use the terms ammonium and ammonia interchangeably, and you can too. Now, so therefore, we have a way of sopping up that excess ammonia that happens. And yes, you say we don't have fixation, so we don't have ammonium in us. We do. Okay? And you'll see one of the ways that can happen later. But we do have the need to mop up excess ammonium. Well, one of the ways it's mopped up is with this enzyme called glutamine synthetase. Glutamine synthetase takes that excess ammonia, ammonium and along with ATP puts that ammonia onto glutamate and makes glutamine. That's down here. Glutamine now has two, um, two um, um, uh, amine groups on it. Glutamate had one amine group on it. Glutamine can donate one of those amine groups to any of these other biosynthetic processes. So as you can see, this guy can play a role in the synthesis of carbamyl phosphate, in the synthesis of bases in nucleotides, in nucleate in the I'm sorry, the purine bases, also the pyrimidine bases. You can see it going to the synthesis of tryptophan. You can go to see the synthesis of histidine, and so forth. So you see that all of these things are dependent upon that nitrogen from glutamine. So glutamine is a very, very important carrier and transferer of that amine group. The amine is being carried by glutamine and then transferred into biosynthetic processes that result ultimately in these molecules. Interestingly, look at how all these molecules feed back and inhibit the enzyme. No, you're not going to memorize all of those. Okay? But this tells us that nitrogen regulation is very important. What's going to happen if I have too many of these? I'm going to have excess ammonium. I may have a problem. And so one of the reasons that we excrete urea from our bodies, urea we will see, there's a cycle that deals with this. One of the reasons that we excrete urea is to get rid of excess nitrogen. If you have too much nitrogen in the form of amines and ammonia, you develop a condition known as uremia. It's toxic and it can cause major physiological problems. Uremia, U-R-E-M-I-A. So that's the reason that organisms excrete what they excrete. We excrete urea to get rid of excess amines. Birds and Dalmatians, interestingly, excrete uric acid. Okay? Dalmatians are a mutant among the dogs. They excrete uric acid. They don't excrete urea. Anybody ever have a Dalmatian? Was it very sore and sickly? Spastic. Spastic, yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll see why. Uh, it turns out later the Dalmatians, because they, have, they excrete uric acid, have a real problem with soreness. Um, and most people who have Dalmatians notice that they really have a hard time getting around. They're very feeble in terms of their ability to move around. And it's because they're full of uric acid. And we'll see what a problem that, that causes in a bit. OK, so I hope I've impressed on you here that too much nitrogen is a problem. So we don't want to have too much nitrogen. You can now see the reactions going on to the synthesis of glutamine. Alpha ketoglutarate can be converted into glutamate. Here's an ammonium being picked up, and now we've got glutamic acid. Here's another ammonium being picked up, we've got glutamine. So we've started with alpha ketoglutarate, we've gotten to this guy over here that has two amines on it. We've mopped up two ammonias in that process. We've not only mopped them up, but we've made them available so that these guys can now be used to donate those amines to other molecules, bases of nucleotides, histidine, tryptophan, etc. Okay, 
So that's uh, useful. Now, we talk about amino acid biosynthesis. And no, I'm not going to expect that you're going to memorize this. I would certainly hope that you would know that glutamine can come from glutamate because we've just talked about that. But what we see in this process is we're starting to talk about amino acid metabolism. So how amino acids are made is an important part of the nitrogen cycle. The amino acids are the primary, with the exception of the, uh, the bases of the nucleotides, they're the primary nitrogen-containing compounds in our body. The synthesis of the amino acids depends upon certain molecules, and so we put them into certain families. The glutamate family is dependent upon glutamate for its synthesis. If you don't have glutamate, you can't synthesize these guys down here. The aspartate family. Aspartate leads to asparagine. By the way, to go from aspartate to asparagine is just one amine group, just like going from glutamate to glutamine. Several things that come from aspartate. Here's the serine family. Serine leads to cysteine and glycine, two of the simpler amino acids, and itself can be made from 3-phosphoglycerate. You've seen that before. The pyruvate family, pyruvate we've talked about before, leads to alanine. That simply requires putting an amine onto pyruvate to make alanine. You can also make valine and leucine. The ar uh, aromatic family, okay, these are very complicated how these processes occur, but ultimately that's what uh, we can make uh, from these uh, molecules here. The amine, of course, coming from glutamine, as we've seen. And finally, the histidine family, which comes ultimately from ribose 5-phosphate. Okay, now, I show you those not because I'm expecting you're going to memorize which one goes to what and so forth, but to get you to recognize that there are relationships between amino acids in terms of their synthesis. There's relationships. So one can lead to the other, can lead to the other, can lead to the other. Okay? And I'm running over. So maybe that's a good place to stop for the day. I will see you guys here tomorrow. What about them? So that's what I'll talk about next time. But uh, glutamic acid and aspartic acid are made from um, alpha ketoglutarate, which is a, a, a citric acid segment intermediate, and oxaloacetate. Yes, sir. The relative efficiency? It's fairly high. I, I want to say it's on the order of like 40%, something like that. It's, it's pretty darn good. Yeah. But not all that gets incorporated into uh, glucose ultimately. So you lose what you gain in the, in the absorption. You lose in the, um, the, the reactions. The, the, the subsequent reactions aren't very... They're not, they're not as efficient. Uh, I was about to say, like the overall, like the, the highest, some of the record distances uh, for silicon photovoltaics and... Uh, that we're talking about the record, the holders are in the 20s. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, solar panels truly are green. Are you going to plan a uh, review session? I will. Final, so yeah, okay. I will. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Sort of question. Uh -huh. um, I've begun studying this weekend for the final exam. Yeah. And I'm just curious what you would recommend how to study for your final exam. Well, I would say start, as I said before, with the with the uh, exams you've seen and use them as outlines for what to study. Okay. And then sort of branch out from there. And then, of course, the new material I would study for the way I've been studying for the other stuff. Okay. And um, as far as, like, how in-depth do you go, pretty well, much your, your highlights, I would say it's, it's, highlights is... Yeah, highlights are always, are always a valuable way to, to go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's not going to be like any like super detailed things that we hadn't seen like during Well, I never am going to do anything that you haven't seen before. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Did you have another question? Uh, is it too late for the, the correction that I talked to you about? Um, to well, if you talked to me about it before, I think that's fine. Okay. So, okay. Why didn't that light go out? Hi, this is uh, Kevin in Withicom 109. Uh, I logged out of the system, but the projector looks like it stayed on. 
You might want to turn that off. Okay, thank you. Bye. How's it going, guys? Was that dense enough for you? No, it was good. It was good. I'm just You're sorry. part of the botany mafia, so that's yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Photosynthesis is divine, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I like the clear. Definitely. <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah. It's an it's it's actually an old traditional Scottish song, um, and Simon and Garfunkel back in the '60s, long before you were born, um, uh, did a rendition of it called Scarborough Fair. Um, Da, da, dee, 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 dee. It's it's sort of a it almost sounds like a dirge, you know. It sounds kind of morose, but it's it's a it's a very very cool. I love love the melody of the song. You're just like me. <laughs> yep. I I never let hitting the notes ever stop me though. So that's the thing, you know. So if you're gonna let something like that stop you, then you never sing, you know. <laughs>